thanks everyone for joining. I'm very excited to be here at the first GraphQL Conf backed by the GraphQL Foundation itself. A big shout out to all the sponsors and a big thanks to the free coffee. <laughs> I will be talking about GraphQL over internet and please feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions. All right, before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm Dennis and I'm a part of this brilliant company called The Guild. We are the largest open source vendor in the GraphQL ecosystem. And in addition to that, we do trainings and consultancy. This is my handle, you can see it on the screen. And with it, you can, prime, you can find me pretty much anywhere. All in all, I create and solve problems. All right, so I'll just start by giving you a short overview of all of the things that we're going to talk about. Of course, this wouldn't be no GraphQL talk without an introduction to GraphQL. Then we'll immediately jump into talking about GraphQL over HTTP, over WebSockets, over SSCs. Then we'll compare WebSockets to SSCs. And finally, I'll be taking on questions. But please remember that you can stop me anytime and ask questions. So what is GraphQL? In the simplest terms, GraphQL is data language. And that's it, literally. Nothing more, nothing less. It is a system of communication that defines the grammar and the vocabulary. It helps you describe and request the exact data you want, and also helps the server fulfill that request. Like in real world, those that know the language can communicate. Please keep in mind that GraphQL is not a database, it's not a server, it is simply just a language. Imagine ordering a pizza. You call and you ask for a pizza with special toppings. Then the person on the other side takes the order and tells the pizza chef exactly what to make. Well, GraphQL is kind of like that order, except instead of ordering pizza, you ask a server for some data, and instead of speaking to a person, you're sending a specially formatted message to the server called a GraphQL query. Just like you ask for specific toppings, you ask for specific data from the server. And just like the pizza chef, makes your pizza with the exact toppings, the server responds through the GraphQL query with the exact data you requested. Immediately, we can see that there are some agreements on both of the sides. You know you are ordering a pizza, and therefore you know which toppings you can choose from. You also know that both you and the waiter speak the exact same language. And subsequently, you know exactly what to expect when picking up your order, a pizza with the toppings you communicated over the phone. However, neither of you know or care about how the telephone works. Yet without it, you wouldn't be able to communicate the pizza order. Synonymously, GraphQL itself deliberately does not care about the transport. It doesn't care about how you send the request, how you receive the response, what is the delivery path. All of this is completely out of GraphQL scope. It is quite literally just the data language. Okay, so what now? GraphQL over HTTP to the rescue. HTTP is the most common choice when transporting GraphQL because of its ubiquity. With this in mind, a group of people formed in 2019 to solve exactly this problem. A work group of avid GraphQL lovers, all with the same goal, standardize the process of transporting GraphQL over HTTP. The group mostly works asynchronously, but there are Zoom meetings where progress is shared and important topics are discussed. This is a joint effort, so everybody's opinion matters and everyone is more than welcome to join. There is already a specification being standardized that is currently in the proposal stage. And the way that this specification is standardized is we look at the most popular servers we research the conventions, we extend upon the official guidelines, and a union of all of this helps form the specification. It currently describes exclusively single request operations, and this is the main focus. So no file uploads, no incremental deliveries yet. Okay, cool. So we do have a starting spec, but what would a spec be without the reference implementation? So hey, say hi to GraphQL HTTP. It is a zero dependency server, client, and an audit suite. 
the client is simple to use and has a bunch of niceties, one of them being silent retries of failed requests. It exclusively implements the current GraphQL over HTTP spec, and it does so in the clearest and the most explicit manner, so that others implementing their own server or the client can quite literally use GraphQL HTTP as a reference to the spec and the programming language they're using. The library is server agnostic, and as such can run in any JavaScript environment. Additionally, it maintains the list of compliant servers and their reports, so please do PR your own implementation of the server. You're more than welcome. So I'll briefly show the website. If I can get my, yep. So this is the GraphQL HTTP repository. And in it, you have a bunch of examples of how to start with the server in the most used frameworks out there. Also how you can use the client and most of you will spend most of the time in the recipe section when, the, when there is examples of how to set all this up in your own environment with custom logic and special things. Of course, one more thing, checking for compliance was never easier. Using graphql-http.com. It's a website for swiftly auditing servers, even those that are running locally. It is always up to date with the current spec, and it is very safe. Everything runs in the browser. There is no tracking. There is no data sharing. There are no external dependencies either, meaning you can download the website and have a portable offline checker. I'll show how that works. So if you go to the, sorry, if you go to the graphql-http.com website, you will have just a simple input where you can put in a server that gets audited. And if you do a right click and save this website exactly as it is, you can run it on your machine that does not have any internet connection and you can get still all of the benefits of the audit itself. So if we start in the background, a yoga server which is very simple, if you check it out, it's just a server with a simple schema that returns a hello world that currently runs on port 4000. Let's just confirm that it is working. So if we ask for hello, we get the hello world back. So if we go back to Google Chrome to the actual compliance checker and we type in the server the audits will be performed against the URL you provided and you will get a report showcasing all of the things that it's passing or things that it doesn't pass back to the website the official repository you can see in the servers section right here, all of the servers that are currently committed to the repository itself, which have a custom GitHub action implemented that is compliant, that is constantly checking for compliance. And there you can check the status of each of the implementations. And if some of the things that are recommended are not working or some of the notices that you can implement to improve further on your server, you can swiftly see also the response and the recommended test that should be passing for that. All right, so moving on, you can of course build real-time apps with GraphQL, apps that require subscriptions. So what about real-time? Let's start by talking about GraphQL over WebSockets. Before we continue, a brief overview of the history. Originally, there was this library called Subscriptions Transport WS that was built and maintained by Apollo. It had an accompanying protocol, but as time passed, they've spent less and less time on it, very likely due to increased demand on other areas. The repo grew, PRs were never reviewed, it eventually became unmaintained, and today it's officially deprecated. But this library actually kick-started and pushed the evolution. It was a big inspiration of great influence to the upcoming refresh. Okay, so 
What is WebSocket? The WebSocket protocol provides a persistent full duplex communication channel between the client and the server, allowing data to be transmitted in real time. Full duplex is just a fancy word for bi-directional communication, meaning that both server and the client can communicate and send each other messages throughout the same connection. When used in conjunction with GraphQL, it allows clients to subscribe and receive events from the server in real time, making it ideal for applications that require real-time update and push notifications. The GraphQL over WebSocket protocol leverages all of the pros and cons of the WebSocket and gives shine to the real-time GraphQL. Do note that the protocol itself, the new one, is not backwards compatible with the original protocol that Apollo built and that works behind the Subscriptions Transport AWS. And also beware that the specification is currently in RFC, so it is still open to changes. Of course, the specification goes best with that reference implementation. So say hi to GraphQL AWS. It is a zero dependency server and client. It's very simple and very bare bone, but don't be mistaken, it's very versatile and extensible. One key element people often struggle with WebSockets are reconnections. And GraphQL, GraphQL AWS is all about stability. Silent retries and custom strategies are easy to use and extend. Well, yeah, and it's completely server agnostic. So both sides, the client and the server, can be ran in any JavaScript environment. The repository is here, GraphQL AWS. And most of you will spend time on the website. That is very easy and very simple. And like with GraphQL HTTP, it provides a bunch of recipes that will get you going in any of the use cases that you might have. Of course, PRs are welcome, so if you have something that you would like to share or something that is not listed in the recipes here, feel free to contribute or open an issue. Moving on from WebSockets, another option for real time is SSE, which is abbreviated for server sent events. But before we proceed, you might, not, you might ask, why just not use the browser native event source? Do we even need a whole specification around it? Are we overthinking the whole thing? That's actually a great question. And here's a few gotchas about the browser native event source. Headers cannot be customized. The HTTP response is erroneous and not a 200 OK. Event source will completely, will raise a completely vague error. So you will not know what's happening. The requests cannot have an accompanying body, so everything has to be put in the URL itself. The retry mechanism is too simple, and it will just retry with a fixed amount of time uh, until it fails. Server might limit the length of the URL, so you might not be able to use it if your queries are big. And event source will keep reconnecting indefinitely if the server is the one that closes the connection, so meaning if a subscription ends and the server closes the connection as a result, the browser will automatically connect and it will keep on doing that. Keeping everything from the previous slide in mind, GraphQL over SSE specification is created. It basically lifts all of the usual limitations of SSE while keeping the browser native event source in mind. So you're not locked to a library, you're still free to use it. It supports two working modes, a distinct connection mode and a single connection mode. Also note that the, R, that the specification is in RFC and is open to changes. So the first mode I want to talk about is the distinct connection mode. It's pretty much what you would usually use with SSE. Each connection is a subscription on its own. The operation requests conform to the requests in the GraphQL over HTTP spec, but with two key differences. The content type header must have the event stream value indicating that it's a server sent event response. And all of the GraphQL errors must be reported through the SSE connection. So you first accept the connection and then through the active connection, you send or stream the error in form of a message. This allows even event sources to properly display errors if any happened. An additional complete event message is used to indicate to the client that the subscription was completed from the server. This makes event sources aware when the subscription has ended on the server side so that it can be closed and 
avoiding unexpected reconnects. The other mode of operating is called single connection mode. I often talked about limitation in SSC is HTTP 1. HTTP 1 powered servers are limited to only six active connections per domain, meaning you can only have one, or you can only have six concurrently active subscriptions. While HTTP 2 powered servers are by default limited to 100 active connections per domain. The single connection mode provides a single connection to the server, which is exclusively used for streaming the events and messages. And then you issue separate HTTP requests to execute the operation. This property makes it safe for HTTP2 environments, but also for subscription heavy apps, even in HTTP2 environments, simply because subscriptions are typically used and very useful when used granularly. The separated HTTP operation requests conforms to the GraphQL over HTTP spec with just one difference. Successful operation requests are responded with a 202 accepted. And then the results that you, that you expect are then streamed through the single established connection. And again, our reference implementation goes along with the spec. GraphQL SSC is also a zero dependency implementation of both the server and the client. And one cool thing is the fact that the server automatically detects the operation mode, distinct connections mode or the single connection mode, and behaves accordingly. The client is pretty advanced too. It offers a few interesting elements like a custom retry strategy. You can decide exactly when you want to retry, like you might have a health check on a server and only start the retry process when the server becomes healthy. Since GraphQL SSC is packing a custom implementation of SSC and is not using the browser native event source, you're able to set custom headers, add a body to the request and experience very descriptive errors, even if they are not streamed through the body, through the stream itself. Like all of the libraries that are mentioned in the presentation, GraphQL SSC is server agnostic and can as such run in any JavaScript environment. I will briefly show the website, the repository of GraphQL SSC. Here it is. You can Google it and find it. And most of you will spend time on the website here where besides the short introduction, there is a bunch of recipes that will help you get going uh, with any custom use case that you might have. On the first page, as, as a first example in the recipe, you can see how you can use GraphQL SSC in conjunction with event source, with the browser native event source, also React Native and other frameworks, which does not require you to use the GraphQL SSC client on your side. So you can communicate with the server that is functioning on the distinct connections mode without having the requirement of running the GraphQL SSC client itself. So now that we have these two well-established options, which one would you choose? Well, there are pros and cons to each of them, so let's briefly go through that. Comparing WebSockets, which is real-time, bi-directional communication, it has much lower latency because it works over a single TCP connection with the server, but it does have troubles with corporate firewalls. The reason being is that all of the WebSocket connections are established by First, creating and issuing an upgrade request, which is of a different format than what corporate firewalls are used to. So you might have trouble getting this to work in uh, strict environments. Comparing to SSCs, which are transported over a simple HTTP instead, you get the benefits of HTTP. For example, if you are using SSCs in HTTP2 environments, which support multiplexing, you can have multiple subscriptions per domain running within a single TCP connection. And this is actually the recommended way nowadays to use subscriptions in GraphQL. It has built-in retry support for browsers. So if you are using the event source itself, you can just rely on it working without thinking about the retry logic. And of course, it has no trouble with corporate firewalls and it has no trouble uh, having them inspect the packages of itself. That's it. Thank you for your attention, and I'd love to hear your questions.
Yes. So the question is, what HTTP client does the GraphQL SSC use? It uses the fetch API implementation. It basically reads the streamed response, the event source streamed response, parses it, and gives you the results to the client. And because it uses the fetch API, you can run it in any JavaScript environment, not just the browsers. Okay, so using Fetch API and the streaming, the dev, the dev tools have actually very low support. You can read the headers and you can read the payload that is required to, to the server, but you cannot read the streamed events. And currently this is a browser limitation, so there is no way of circumventing that. Instead, what you can do is in the library itself, there is a on message event, which you can hook up onto and it will basically uh, be called on every message received from the server. Yep. Uh, so the limit if you are using a uh, proper HTTP one server is actually six connections per domain. But usually in production environments, you will be using an P2 powered server. So I wouldn't worry about limitations when facing production servers. The things and the issues that you might face is during development, where you usually use a server that runs on HTTP one, an unsecured server. But as soon as you face the production area, you will be using HTTP2 if you are using some of the modern systems and modern servers in any of the languages actually, and that will enable you to use the 100 connections per domain. And even in cases where you have a subscription heavy app, like where you might have more than 100 subscriptions in a single page of an app, using the single connection mode will be very helpful because then you can have just one connection and run as many subscription as you might want. Cool. Thanks again, and I hope to see you at the Guild booth.